In this short video, I'm going to cover the application and use of our DNA gyrase assay kit, catalog number TG2000NG. Topogen provides this kit for researchers who wish to measure gyrase activity or screen novel anti-gyrase compounds. The kit manual is shown here. This is a content-rich, well-documented kit that includes enzyme DNA gyrase and relaxed DNA substrate. As you can see, it's available in multiple sizes. We offer the best discounts for these larger kits, and the enzyme is reasonably stable. So depending on your screening needs, you should order the size that's appropriate. Please contact us for specific details on ordering. This slide describes some key features of DNA gyrase. All gyrases are classified as type 2 topoisomerases. They act by introducing transient double-strand DNA breaks and there is an absolute requirement for ATP and divalent cations such as magnesium. Gyrase is also an essential enzyme and is required for ongoing replication. To date, there have been no eukaryotic gyrase equivalents, therefore these drugs are uh, effective antibacterials. In terms of anti-gyrase drug action, there are basically two modes of action listed here. As an interfacial poison, uh, some drugs disrupt the reaction sequence of the breakage and resealing, and this leads to fragmentation of the bacterial genome and cell death, probably through an SOS-type response. Other drugs act as CICs, or we call that catalytic inhibitory compounds. These are inhibitors that simply block activity either by preventing DNA binding or blocking accessory factors such as ATP hydrolysis. Clinically, bacterial resistance is an ongoing problem because of the widespread use of fluoroquinolones and other anti-gyrase drugs. So there's an ongoing need for anti-gyrase agents, uh, and this is where the kit can come in uh, particularly well for detecting and blocking uh, gyrase activity. The gyrase assay kit should be viewed as a technology transfer method. So the topogen assay uh, topogen gyrase assay kit can be uh, described in, as containing the following. First of all, we have purified gyrase. This is either from E. coli or we also have Staph aureus. These gyrase A and B subunits are overexpressed and they're produced separately and then they're reconstituted to generate highly active and homogeneously pure enzyme. The kit contains Additionally, relaxed plasmid substrate. This is pretested to support activity. We prepare this PHOT1 relaxed DNA by human topo1 action. In addition, the kit contains various buffers, reaction buffers, dilution stop buffers, and so forth. Also included are the marker DNAs such as Form 1 and Form 1R. It's especially important to run these markers to be able to interpret the data. Finally, the kit itself is rich in protocol and details on applications. The reagents are very well controlled and sample DNA is provided for interpretation. We offer an FAQ page both with the kit and on the website and helpful hints. This kit measures supercoiling of the relaxed DNA plasmid and gyrase introduces negative supercoiling to generate the Form 1 DNA or supercoil products. The relaxed DNA and the product migrate very differently in agarose gels. An important tip, these gels should be run in the absence of the intercalator ethidium bromide during the electrophoretic run. Such EB gels do not resolve substrate and product adequately. So it's important to simply run non-ethidium bromide gels and then simply stain with ethidium bromide after electrophoresis is complete. Now this slide gives more detail on the mechanism of gyrase. And a couple of concepts will make this very clear. First of all, gyrase makes double-strand breaks in DNA, followed by resealing of the break. Conceptually, this is very simple. Second, while the DNA is in a broken state, and this is in a transient state, an enzyme DNA gate forms, and the intact strand, or the unbroken strand, is passed through the enzyme DNA gate. This changes a parameter we call DNA linking number, and I'd like to define it very quickly here. If you take two single-strand DNA rings that are unlinked in space, 
the linking number would be zero because these two species are not intertwined or interlinked. A topoenzyme such as topoisomerase 1 has the ability to nick one strand while allowing passage through the uh, broken intermediate of the intact strand. This will generate two single strand rings now with a linking number of one as shown in this diagram. Note that the linking number will always be an integer and it's not possible to have a fractional linking number. Now a type 2 enzyme such as gyrase breaks both strands and reseals both strands. In this simple example it would be the equivalent of two independent single strand nicking and resealing steps. Ultimately this result in a final change in linking number of two as shown by this diagram. How gyrase actually accomplishes this in duplex DNA, thereby introducing negative supercoils, is illustrated in the next slide. So starting with relaxed DNA shown on the left, gyrase wraps the DNA to form a positive node, which automatically creates a compensating negative node. Now this is a geometric change uh, in the DNA molecule and not a change in linking number at this point. Next, the enzyme makes a transitory double-strand break and this corresponding protein DNA gate is formed. Note that the DNA is cleaved behind the overlaying duplex in this particular model. Then, the intact duplex is passed through the gate and the break reseals now on the front side of the node. The end result is a formation of one negative supertwist. This process then repeats cyclically until all the substrate DNA is fully supercoiled to physiological levels. And you can see the supercoiled DNA product separated from the relaxed DNA substrate in this small agarose gel image. This slide shows a few applications of the kit. Many of our customers are interested in measuring gyrase action in purified or crude extracts. They may be interested in assessing the effect of a protein cofactor, for example, or analysis of mutants of gyrase in terms of catalytic activity. So the kit is ideal for this particular application. In addition, if your lab is making new compounds or identifying small molecules or natural products, these may target DNA gyrase acting as either interfacial poisons or catalytic inhibitors. So this kit is ideal for detecting mechanism of action of anti-gyrase targeting compounds. In this slide, let's take a look at some actual data. A typical agarose gel analysis from the kit is shown. The left lane, actually the left two lanes, show typical gyrase activity. Relaxed DNA is shown here, and the relaxed DNA is actually composed of a set of topoisomers. Each of these DNAs differ in discrete linking numbers, and this is normal for a relaxed template. This latter, in fact, is diagnostic for the presence of topoisomers and represents a Gaussian distribution of linking numbers. In this case, the linking numbers are centered around the fully relaxed state. This is actually sometimes referred to as LK0, and it's a low energy state, and the molecules lack supercoiling. We prepare this substrate, again, using DNA topoisomerase. In the next lane, we load a linear DNA marker. Such markers are essential to interpret the effects of drugs on gyrase. Also, since some relaxed topoisomers can be seen in this last lane, with ciprofloxacin, it's possible to imagine that this particular drug is acting as a catalytic inhibitor, looking at the last lane, and also as a poison because you can see above this scatter of bands in the last lane, we have a linear DNA cleavage product which stands out very clearly and again co-migrates closely with a linear DNA marker shown in the third lane over. This particular experiment clearly shows that the kit will detect interfacial poisons, it will detect catalytic inhibitors, and in some cases, a mixture of both as shown in this particular experiment. I hope this short video has been helpful. In closing, it's vitally important to stress that our scientific staff are well-versed in the application of these kits, and in fact, all aspects of topoisomerase biochemistry. We offer incisive product support Please feel free to contact us with your data. We can help you with our interpretation or future experimental design. This is a service provided to all of our customers. The email for this service is provided here and also on our website. Thanks for your attention and interest.